Good morning, and welcome back to another virtual visit here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Taylor, and I'm really excited that you're able to tune in today. Now, I know I'm not Alex, and I'm sorry to disappoint, but he is on a much-needed vacation and will be having a blast somewhere else. But today, we will be learning all about sea otters. But before we get started, I wanted to take a moment and thank our sponsor, Royal Caribbean Group, for making all of these programs possible. Now, just in true Alex fashion, we totally got a fabulous shot of the sunrise here this morning. It's been super rainy and super snowy the last couple of days here in Seward. And so to have a gorgeous sunrise like this this morning was extremely spectacular. It was almost like an ice skating rink walking to work this morning. Look at that sunrise. The sun rises at about 9.47 in the morning now, and it's scheduled to set around 3.52. Now, you may remember a couple of weeks ago, Alex did a two-part episode covering the rehab of two harbor seal pups that were found right out here in Resurrection Bay in Seward. And when you were able to follow the whole journey from start to finish, and spoiler alert, the two of them were released right here in Resurrection Bay down at Tonsina Point. But it was a great episode. I'm very biased towards it, of course. But you were able to see all of the steps through the journey. So coming into our wildlife response program, seeing all of the veterinary tactics that were happening, seeing how going from being here right away to being to, at the center for about five or six months before they were able to be released. It was such a great journey to watch, and I highly suggest you go back and watch it. Now, seals and sea otters definitely differ when it comes to care here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. They're still getting all of the love and support just like normal, but whenever their ages differ, that's also super important. So, sea otter pups typically come in to our wildlife response program because maybe they were stranded or they were separated from their mother, which that's our number one cause of stranding typically that we see. And then same thing with seals. But whenever we do see a sea otter and it's an adult, that's also really great because hopefully typically we can treat them and then are able to release them. So let me tell you about a story of Poppy. Poppy is a female northern sea otter who is found in Soldovia, stranded on a remote beach, where a family who is camping nearby spotted her. She looked like she was in distress, and they also called our stranded marine animal hotline. So, Soldovia is across Kachemak Bay from Homer, which is on the southern end of the Kenai Peninsula, directly opposite of Seward. Now, Soldovia is not on the road system here in Alaska, so it is only accessible via plane or by water. So this made things really interesting to get Poppy back to the Sea Life Center. After receiving U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service permission, our team called a stranding partner who is part of the Soldovia Village Tribe who cared for Poppy overnight before she could be transported via water taxi back to Homer. The Homer Veterinary Clinic was called upon her arrival to Homer where they administered fluids before she made the 174 mile car ride back to Seward. Once back at the Sea Life Center, our veterinary team did a very thorough medical checkup on Poppy, who at this time didn't have her name quite yet. So they were able to listen to her heart and her lungs, were able to check her eyes, her ears, her teeth. She got swaddled into this towel, similar as to a baby. And as she's getting swaddled, it's very important to realize that she is able to stay all nice and warm but also so that she's not flailing all around the table. So our vet staff is able to thoroughly check her vitals and to determine the right course of action for Poppy's plan here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. A really, really big thank you to the family who called about Poppy. She's in great hands now. But very important, if you ever see a stranded animal it's very important that you call our marine animal hotline. That way that we can know exactly where you are and never, never approach the animal. So here at the center in our wildlife response program, whenever a sea otter comes into our care, and if it's a pup, we typically take on the role as being the mother. Sea otters are with their mom for about six months learning all of the ropes of the how to survive in the real world. 
They're understanding how to be fed, how to groom themselves, how to be played with, how to survive in the wild. And that's super, super important. So if one day the mom is gone, that's a really big deal. And so that is where they come to us. And so whenever they, when they are coming into the wildlife response program here, like I was mentioning that we become their mom, they're able to get all of the care that they deserve right here. Now, typically, whenever an otter comes into our care, we go into quarantine. Now, you're probably familiar with the word quarantine, given the situation that we've been in the last year or so. But same with the word quarantine, this basically means limited contact, and that anyone who comes in and sees the otters has to shower in and then shower out, just making sure that we're not transmitting anything to these otters who are so vulnerable. Another mom responsibility that the Sea Life Center's wildlife response team takes on is taking over all of the grooming. So the main goal here is to keep the sea otter pup's coat as nice, clean, and dry as possible. Now sea otters do not have much fat. They don't have that layer of blubber like seals or sea lions. And so their thick coat keeps them warm. And making sure that that thick coat is dry is essentially key into making sure that they are nice and warm when they're out in the freezing, freezing water. So whenever sea otters continue to grow and get older, they start to be able to clean themselves and to groom themselves. So here you can see one of our otters attempting to help a little bit, rolling around, trying to be all nice and warm and trying to help with the towel, but then ends up just checking out the towel instead and seeing who's moving around. But finally, to get the hang of it, we kind of step back and just watch. They fluff themselves up by shaking, trying to shake the water out. And then they get so fluffy that they just float on top of the water. And during this time, if you have any questions, please feel free to text them to the number below. questions. You ready for a question? I am ready for a question. Yes, thank you, Shauna. All right. How did Poppy get her name? How did Poppy get her name? That's a really great question, and I'd love to tell you why. So here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, whenever any of our animals come into the center, they get names, right? Just like you and me. So whenever they come in, typically they're given either an Alaskan name or maybe some sort of theme, or maybe the two of them coincide. So Poppy, a poppy is a really beautiful flower that's found here in Alaska. And so this year's theme was plants or flowers. And so Poppy got her name because she is so cute and beautiful and bright and fun, and it just really fit her. She's also quite the screamer, which you're going to hear in a little bit longer. Um, but she's, a, she's an active girl. We also have a little boy, and his name is Douglas Maple, which is a type of tree here found in Alaska. Over the summer in the aviary, we had two uh, puffins that were hatched. And one of their names was Han, like Han Solo from Star Wars. And the other was Chewy, like Chewbacca, also from Star Wars. So can you guess the theme? Definitely Star Wars. But thank you. Yes, so that's how Poppy got her name. Also, so, which we're going to talk about in a little bit long, in, in a little bit, but sea otter pups are not releasable. So that means that because they require so much human care, they um, will always like li live in human care. And so wherever the otter may be going also has a say in their name. Great question. So Taylor, will Poppy stay here with you or is she gonna have to go somewhere else? Yeah, great question. So as I was just saying, sea otters are not releasable, but here at the center, we don't have the, all of the proper uh, enclosures for these animals, for these sea otters to stay permanently here. So we work with other facilities around the country and even internationally to ensure that they find a proper home. I'm not entirely sure where exactly any of our otters will be going, but stay tuned. A viewer asked if what the letters mean at the bottom of the screen that they keep seeing. Great question. Yes. So the permit number is what you're seeing at the bottom. And so all of these animals are federally protected animals. 
And because they are living here with us for a little while and then they're being transferred somewhere else potentially at a later date, um, this is monitored by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And so that number that you're seeing with letters also is just their permit number, meaning that it's okay for us to show these clips. All right, are you ready for one last question? Yes. All right, what kinds of food do you feed them? What kind of foods do we feed them here at the center? That's a really great question. Let me show you. So the foods here at the center that are prepared come in many different shapes and sizes and even different delivery methods, such as in those fun molds right there. Those would become ice treats. Or here, you see Jane is preparing a baby bottle for our sea otter pup. Now that bottle probably looks maybe similar to something that you might have at home if you are a parent or if you have a younger sibling who's getting a bottle because it's the exact same one. Now, we can't exactly provide what the mother otter would be able to provide to her pup here at the center, but we can do our very best. So here we're helping to provide extra vitamins or maybe medicine, and Jane is crushing that up to be added into the baby bottle. So it's a really easy way to get that medicine to the otter. And sometimes these sea otter pups are pretty gassy. So they do get cymethicone, which is basically gas X and it gets added into their bottle so that their stomachs don't hurt and that they're a little bit less gassy. If you've ever had a chance to see our Amazon wish list, oftentimes you could maybe find Gasex as one of our items on our wish list, and that just means that it is for our rehab animals here. So now the components of the baby bottle actually contain puppy milk formula. And combined with the puppy milk formula is also a clam or a couple of clams slurried into the formula. That way it is a little more enticing and a little more tasty for our sea otters. Now, this clear liquid that Jane is adding into the baby bottle is an electrolyte formula. And it is going to help provide our sea otter pups a little bit of extra hydration. So just like whenever preparing a human baby bottle, we know that temperature is key. It can't be too hot, it cannot be too cold, it has to be just right. So Jane just poured some boiling hot water into the clear glass right there, and she's going to add the baby bottle into the middle of it and stir it around. And you see the thermometer there that she'll use just to make sure that it's not too hot for our sea otter or even too cold. So 100 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature that we are looking for here. That is the perfect temperature for our sea otter pups to enjoy this lovely meal. Similar to human babies who need to be weaned off of a baby bottle and transitioned into solid foods, it's the same thing with sea otters. Here, clam and squid are on the menu and they're being weighed out in order to keep track of how many grams of food each of our sea otters are getting. And because Douglas Maple here was brought into us at the center at around four months old, he's strictly getting solid foods only. But both of our sea otters are being fed now about every three to four hours, whereas at the beginning when they were a little bit younger, they were getting fed every two hours. So they were on a very strict schedule meaning that we had to be on a very strict schedule. These otters are under our care and our supervision 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There is always someone in rehab who is going to be watching after these otters. Now you can see this adult sea otter who's being fed about three to four times a day is being tossed food and it is being laid on its belly there. And that is a safety precaution that we are taking because as we remember that these are wild animals, we want to keep our hands as far away from those teeth as possible. As you may notice, sea otters out in the wild typically floating on their backs while they're eating, that's what we're trying to mimic here. We're trying to make sure that they are comfortable floating on their backs and in the water as they enjoy their delicious meal. Wow, would you look at the size of the teeth on that sea otter? Thank goodness that those hands are not close to their mouths because Wow, that'd be really scary. So one really cool thing that I wanted to show you guys today was I have a sea otter skull right here that I wanted you to take a look at the teeth. 
and into the jaw. Pretty cool. But one thing about sea otters is that they have these little guys right here have the jaw strength of a black bear. So let me show you a black bear skull. Now, that's a lot bigger than the sea otter skull we just looked at. Let me hold them up together. Could you imagine? I'm sure that they're in, in the shot of the camera. They're a lot different in size. But the fact that this little guy has the same jaw strength as this big guy, it's pretty wild. Hey, Taylor, can you take one more question? Absolutely. How big do sea otters get? How big do sea otters get? So, sea otters can get up to about five feet, adult sea otters. So, I was hoping someone would ask this today because I actually have a pelt of a sea otter here. And now I'm 5'8", so just for reference, but I know you can't see my whole body, but if I can go to the side here, you can see oh, that they're pretty, pretty tall. So the sea otter's tail is, is touching the ground right now. So I'm, yeah, a little bit under 5'8", actually. Um, yeah, so they can get about to five feet. They can weigh up to 100 pounds or so. Typically, the males are the ones who can get up to 100 pounds, and females can get up to about 80, I think, anywhere from 65 to 80. Great question. So as you were seeing in our video, you saw that the sea otter was laying on its back, and we were tossing food towards it, right? We didn't want to get anywhere near the crazy teeth of the sea otter. Um, but this is basically encouraging behaviors that would be occurring in the wild. So it's super important for us to be able to replicate these and to make sure that they're getting all of the right stimulation and that they're enriched and that they are living their best lives as they can when they're in human care. So enrichment is not always for food. There are other forms of enrichment and I'd like to show you about them. So I had the opportunity to help Jane make clamsicles for our sea otter pups. Now a clamsicle is basically an otter popsicle. We're taking these fun molds and putting bits of clam into them, weighing them out so that we know how much clam is in each of the clamsicles, and then adding water and popping them in the freezer. Now these icy cold treats are something that otters love to play with and love to eat. Definitely keeps their lives enriched. So you're gonna see Douglas Maple taking one of his clamsicles, going to put it in his otter pocket, which is basically a really big armpit that they store food in and sometimes rocks and other things, toys, we've seen it all. But here you're gonna see him roll around and washing off his food. And this is a normal natural behavior that you would see in the wild too. They like to roll and play with their food. And as he's biting into it, trying to get to that clam in the middle, so this is a form of enrichment. Now enrichment is a technical term that's a broad term for ways to make an animal that's living in human care as happy as possible. It could be something as simple as toys like you see here or a ball with a clam in the middle as he's gonna bang it around and trying to get the clam out, keeping his mind active and himself entertained. Many toys that we have here at the center mimic natural behaviors that the animal would be doing in the wild. For example, we have pieces of felt that would be like they were playing with kelp. And also other things like whenever otters are growing up, they teeth just like human babies. So another parallel there. And when then these otters are growing up and they're growing in their adult teeth, we have to give them lots of things to chew on so that they're not chewing on things in their enclosure or chewing on us. Another form of enrichment is also teaching these animals behaviors like getting them comfortable with people around and teaching them to be good citizens and not biting or crawling at people. Essentially, the main goal of enrichment is to make their lives as enriched as possible when they're living with humans. And this guy looks pretty happy. Otters are also social critters so if we have a couple of adult otters or otters that were found around the same area, we allow them to interact with each other and get to have fun with each other.
They're also super, super loud. So here are two clips, one of a young sea otter pup and one who's about a couple months old now. Take a listen for yourself. Oh my goodness, is she loud. I had the opportunity to go downstairs into rehab a couple of times and get some of the footage that you're seeing today and constant screaming, constant screaming. But that's just her way of communicating to us and saying, hey, look at me, crazy. Hey Taylor, how many people work in the rehab department? Great question. How many people work in the rehab department? So we typically have about four to five permanent full-time staff that's here all year round. However, whenever we have more of an influx of animals, we add on seasonal, so that could be up to anywhere between six to 10 probably additional people. Um, but again, that could also go down. But we also, in that number also, there's volunteers as well who, who do end up getting some of the less than favorable feed times, you know, maybe at two o'clock in the morning. But as I was mentioning earlier, there's always someone here 24 seven. And so there are people constantly making sure that all of our animals, because that sometimes we could have up, we could have four or five, six animals at one time. Um, sea otter pups are typically seen more in the summertime. And so that's normally when we would add more people. Great question, thank you. Just one more. How many hairs does the otter have? Yeah, okay, so they have one million hairs per square inch, which is about the size of an okay sign or like a postage stamp. So if we pull this guy back out, I mean, I don't know an exact number of hairs, but a whole bunch. At least, I don't know, a billion, a trillion, who knows, a ton of hairs. I'm sorry that's not as specific as you probably were looking for because it does vary on the size of the sea otter. But if you think of if this is a million hairs in just this little inch, square inch right here, there's a lot of square inches along this guy. But great question, thank you. Yeah, so you saw all of the different forms of enrichment that we do here at the center, which I think is super awesome. As I was mentioning, I did have the opportunity to go down with Jane and make clamsicles, and that was super fun, especially seeing how happy they were whenever they got to take their little trays and get to play around in the ice. The other day, um, here in Seward, it's been super weird with the weather. It's been snowy, and then it's been rainy. But a couple weeks ago, we had a really nice uh, fresh snow, and they brought in little buckets of snow for our sea otters. And so I actually, and they put little frozen treats in the snow. So Poppy, I got to watch her dig through the snow and play with the snow and lay on her back. And maybe you saw it in our start credits earlier today. Um, you saw her being fed outside super beautiful. They do love to play in the snow. They also live outside, so uh, they do get that snow. But yeah, so enrichment, super awesome. Another big topic here is, like I've already kind of addressed, is why are sea, otters, sea otter pups not releasable? It's because of that six-month period about whenever they are so reliant on their moms, right? So whenever mom is going down and diving down and getting mussels or other things that they're eating, other forms of shellfish, right? They typically wrap the baby or the sea otter pup up in kelp, which is actually why I'm standing in front of the kelp forest here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. That way it's kind of like the sea otter mother can dive down and pick up food and then bring it back up. So that is more or less why they're considered not releasable. However, sea otter adults are. And if they're able to be released, that is the number one goal. So, we had the pleasure of releasing Zippy and Hook, who are two sea otters that were found right out here in Resurrection Bay. Let me introduce you to them. Um, when Zippy came in, this is the zip tie that he had wrapped around his paw. So if you can imagine this being attached, we cut it off when he came in. So that's kind of the size of maybe like a quarter, um, super duper small. If he hadn't been picked up, he would have lost the paw. and and gotten really sick because this cutting into your flesh allows bacteria and things to get into that area because he's living in the marine environment 
and that will make him sick and could make him pass away. So we're really lucky we caught him when we did. It's been really important for us to see how that paw is changing. He came with it in with a zip tie around his right paw and that zip tie was super tight and it cut off circulation to his paw and kind of hurt the upper part of his arm as well. And so we've been monitoring that over time to see if we're making a difference. So we have some antibiotics on board. We're actually giving really cool, we're giving antibiotics actually right around the site of the inflammation, the infection, to see if we can really target those bones and help them heal. And today, I'm pleased. You know, today was a routine procedure for him to pull him out and take a look, and we're we're seeing a difference, so we're making a difference for him. So that paw that used to be really stiff and tight and not able to move because there was inflammation and some scar tissue building up in there, it's more mobile now, which is awesome. The inflammation in his paw, like his distal part of his digits, has come down. So our little plan that we have of some anti-inflammatories and some antibiotics so far is working. And he's cooperating because he's taking those medicines from us in fish and in food, which is really hard for an adult otter. Adult otters are notoriously challenging in captivity. They know what the real world is all about and they would like to be there instead of with us, which is completely normal. But for Zippy, he's done a good job of settling in and our staff is doing a really fantastic job of feeding him in ways that keep him guessing and keep him engaged with being in this, this different environment. This different environment Dr. Elizabeth is referring to is down in our rehab pools in our wildlife response program here. Now you can see his red mark right there on his right paw where the zip tie was tightly around his wrist. However, with the thanks to our awesome veterinary staff here at the Sea Life Center, he was definitely displaying signs that he was ready to get back out into the wild and we had a successful release of Zippy. Meat Hook another male sea otter who was spotted in Resurrection Bay about four or five years ago who had a fish hook stuck in his flipper. Now this hook you see here is primarily used for salmon fishing in Resurrection Bay and each summer hundreds of thousands of people flock to sewer to fish. So imagine how many hooks are potentially left behind and harmful. Our wildlife response team needed to take action so we caught him while he was taking a nap. He was quickly taken to the Sea Life Center had many, many x-rays taken, and you can even see the hook at the top of the screen. Our veterinary team was able to successfully remove the hook and back out into the wild he went. However, a few months later, he had another fish hook in his face. Our team knew he was the same sea otter because he had a hole in his flipper from the first hook. He then was taken back into the Sea Life Center, had that hook removed, and back out into the wild he went. Now, if you happen to live in Seward or, or anywhere near Resurrection Bay, you actually can probably see Zippy and Hook still swimming around today. Zippy has two orange flipper tags and Hook has a pale pink and a white one on his rear flippers. So definitely, if you grab a pair of binoculars and go out there looking, you may be able to find Zippy and Hook, who are two really great success stories here. So let this be a reminder that whenever you are fishing or camping or hiking to please make sure that you leave only footprints because this really shows that marine debris like this really, really can affect marine life and all like with entanglements and ingestion and other things. So it's super important that we all leave only footprints. How are we looking for questions? We have a couple more. Okay, awesome. Um, so when we have two otters in, like Poppy and Douglas, when they go to their forever home, do they still, will they travel together or will they be separated? Yeah, okay, that's a great question. Yes, typically the answer is yes. If two or more otters are introduced into the same area, I think the, the main goal is so that they will travel together to their forever home. However, it really depends on the facility that they're going to. Um, so I can't answer that exactly because it just depends on the capacity, but the main goal, yes. Great question, thank you. Any other questions? How long do otters typically live? Yeah, great question. So otters typically live between 10 and 15 years in the wild and about 15 to 20 years in human care, which is super great. Um, that's a pretty long lifespan. And uh, yeah, great question. Anything else? 
I have a wonderful team here that is running all of my questions and computer and everything. It's so fun here today. So that's it for today. I'm really thankful that you were able to join me here today. I want to thank our sponsor, Royal Caribbean Group, again for making this program possible. Um, and I really, I really thank you. So next week, right here at 11 a.m. Alaska Standard Time on YouTube, next Wednesday, we will be assembling a stellar sea lion skeleton. Be sure to tune in. It's going to be really awesome. Bye for now.